Good morning, YouTube. It's a lofty biker here. I'm up at Damerals again. I've come to ride a bike. I've found one. I've found something to ride. It is the 2020 KTM 390 Adventure. Now, this is identical to the 2022 model. It's the current model if you go to buy it. I've been looking forward to riding this for a long time, so we'll get me on. We'll get the cameras on and we'll get looking at it. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, YouTube. What do you reckon? It's in good nick, isn't it? I'm not sure how many miles it's done. I'll tell you in a minute. But nice looking bike. It's got the KTM aftermarket easy grips fitted. Right, ignition on. Ready to race. Lovely dash. Loads of petrol in, half a tank. It's done 7,000 miles. I've got to say, this is the first time I've got on a little bike and it's not felt too small. Feels nice. Here we go. Into the national. Yeah, I like the dash. Quite a bit of wind again today, so let's hope the sound <laughs> the sound's not too bad. It's quite peppy. Just give you the big bike feel. Yeah. Hmm. Quite good. I'm getting quite a lot of noise off the screen. <clears throat> We're all clear. Let's take it around the island and see what it's like. Drop, drop a cog. Oh, it holds a lovely line. Yeah, I can't fault that. That's one of the better ones I've took around this island, to be fair. Nice big indicator, so up the hill. Yeah, easy up to 60. Right. Let's uh, flip it round. Have a look. U-turns are doddle. Back brake's quite nice for that. Yeah, good. Let's have a look. Good morning, YouTube. Lofty biker here. What do you think? Looks good, doesn't it? Swim me leg over. KTM 390 Adventure. Gotta say, first impressions are fit and finish, superb. This bike is a 2020 model. It's a current model, like I said in the intro. You can go out and buy this, it's identical. This actual bike has done 7,000 miles. I'm really impressed it's been looked after and it does look pretty damn good. Anyway, leg room. <clears throat> there you go. So there's a li little bump pad there. So I'm in the bump pad. There's my knees. I've got loads of room at the front. I, I can even get my toes on the pegs. This is a 390. I'm six foot four with a 33 in seam and 17 and a half stone. It feels like a full size motorbike. This doesn't feel like a toy or a little bike. This is the dogs. I'm impressed. I really do like first impressions of this small bike. Anyway, let's have a bit of a close up and I'll tell you a bit about it. Okay, so there we are. Pipe don't look too bad, does it really? Let's just have a walk around. It's got everything, everything you want. All the bits and pieces you need. It's got more tech on it than anything else in the class. It's probably the most comfortable for a big person in the class. The easiest to ride for a big person in the class. In general, pretty good. A lot of people comment about the seat, they say it's quite hard. Initial um, impressions were that it felt fairly firm, but it's okay. So let's have a look at the dash. It's got a key. We all like keys. So there we go, ready to race. Full TFT. Now I do like that dash. We got um, miles per hour, digi um, 
taco, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, it says ABS is set on road, the MTC is on, that's a traction control, the Odo 7000 miles, kill switch activated, trip 1, trip 2, date, battery, time, pretty good isn't it? Pretty damn good. So what we got? Adjustable, adjustable brake lever. Kill switch, start, stop. There's your button for the start. Coming across, we've got um, not the noisiest looking uh, per uh, master cylinder, but it's a boy one. That okay. Coming across, there's your key across. Cable operated clutch. We got the genuine KTM ET grips, which look like they've got four settings. Uh, adjustable clutch lever, hand guards. Um, fairly, well, what you can say, fairly modern looking um, KTM mirrors. They've got these rubber gaiters on. They're not the nicest, but they're okay. I could pull up with it. I ain't that bothered. So we've got um, pass, pass light, return set up and down, a big indicator, and the horn below. So on. Yeah, it's quite a good horn. Let's switch it on, see what it sounds like when we get it into life. Power on. Fairly, fairly quiet to tick over. Let's give it a bit of rev, see what we get. That's not too bad, it's got a bit of a rasp to it. It's alright, isn't it? So let's just kill the ignition. Switch it off. And let me tell you a bit about it. Okay, so KTM promised us an adventure model. They bought this out in 2020. This is the current model you buy now. I'm very impressed with everything. I say the fit and finish is lovely. It is a 373cc liquid cooled four stroke single. 44 brake horsepower at nine and a half thousand revs. Although the shift light does start to flash at about eight to tell you to change gear. It's got 27.3 foot-pounds of torque at 7,000 revs. Fairly lofty seat for the, for the genre of lightweight uh, bikes. 855 mil, I find it very comfortable. This is the bit I like, a 158 kilogram wet weight. Brilliant. Not a bad sized tank either, 14.5 litres, which gives you around 84 miles to the gallon. So it's not bad, is it really? It's got a, at least a three gallon tank. You're going to be doing up to 200 miles, aren't you? We've got on the front white power apex upside down shocks. Very, very nice. Fully adjustable. On the rear, we've got a central mounted white power shock, which is also adjustable. So here are brakes. I'll come around the other side. We've got a fairly big disc. We've got a full 320 single disc with Bybri radial calipers. Not too bad. They're fairly good Bybri. I can't knock them. It's the cheaper subsidiary of Brembo. Coming along, chain drive. Round the back, what we got? A 320 disc with a single piston by Brie caliper on the rear. It's got a bit of a hugger thingy built in. We've got a rack on the back built in. You can put your top box on, whatever you want. Strap a bag over it, easy peasy. The seat, the passenger seat looks fairly, um, fairly capacious, really. Foot pegs for the... Foot pegs there, that's not bad is it? That, I think you could ride this two up fairly comfortably, not bad at all. In general, it's not bad is it? We're running 190.19 on the front and a 130.80.17 on the rear. TKC 70s, good tyres, fairly good. They do light off-roading, gravel tracks, green lanes. I wouldn't have thought mud would be there, Forte, but gravel, no problem at all. Lean, sensitive ABS, traction control. We've got a 12-volt power socket just below the dash. Colour TFT, as I said. Bluetooth connectivity. You download the uh, KTM app and you can connect your phone to it. What does all this cost, you might ask? Well, five and a half grand. Not bad, is it? Five and a half grand on the road. These engines are made under licence at Barjaja, whatever you want to call it, in the Chenkan factory in uh, India. 
they're not Chinese, they're made in India under license, they make a lot of bikes and a lot of um, bits and pieces for KTM. Except for the V-Series bikes, most of it's uh, made in India. But I'm quite impressed with the, the fit and finish. Anyway, I'll waffle on. Let's go for a ride. See you in a minute. Okay, YouTube, welcome back. I've just put the heated grips on. We'll see how long I take to come through. I'll put them on full. Right, we'll go straight on. Jesus, I don't think he was going to stop. In fact, he wasn't going to stop. Okay, up to 50. Very, very peppy. One good thing about KTMs is they're pretty nippy, ain't they? They do what they say on the tin, ready to race. This does hold a really nice line. Well, I've got to say, when I took out the uh, Himalayan, the BMW Rally. I felt the Himalayan was half a decent off-roader, but he hadn't really got that pep, he hadn't got that extra bit for the road. I thought the BMW Rally, the GS Rally, was fantastic. But I've got to say, this engine, I think this engine is better than the BMW engine. It is far peppier, although don't get me wrong, that was good fun. This is that little bit bigger, it's got that slightly better suspension altogether. It's not pogo-y or bouncy, it's pretty firm, pretty solid. Just drop it to third. Bang it out to the left, a bit wet. Pop it in, nice and easy. I can feel the grips coming through now. We've got a green light. I don't very often catch that light. I've caught you today and I've had two cars in front of me. Typical. Anyway, I'm going to let them go. Approaching the 30. Drop a cog, brakes on. Yeah, nice and easy. Third gear, 30. So narrow down the middle. I've got... I've got my knees into the tank, tucking in nice and steady. It feels so narrow. I like it. My first impressions are, I, I really like this bike. I know I always say that about everything we ride, but to be fair, I'm a big bloke. And a lot of the time, I'm, I'm only really riding these type of bikes for your benefit, so as you get a feel of what they're like. But, Every now and again I get a bike that suits me and to be honest I could buy this, I could ride this, I could go to work on it, I could go off-roading on it, I could go scratching on it, I could go out with the lads and the lasses on a weekend and I wouldn't feel intimidated that uh, it wouldn't be quick enough or I wouldn't be able to keep up. This is pretty damn good. So we'll just steadily go through the village, 30 mile an hour. By the way, the ET grips are pretty damn good. Bit of traffic, let's just take our time. Steady it on the back, then we go. It's a little bit chuggy at low revs, but it's not too bad. As soon as you get up to two and a half, three, well, three really, it starts to feel a lot better. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's quite smooth. It must have some sort of balancer in there because normally little singles are a lot chuggier than that. Up the hill. Back into third. It's, uh, it needs a bit more revs than some of the other bikes I've taken out in this uh, CC. I'll just pull in here behind the van. Plenty of room as it happens.
so we go up the hill past the garage, take a ride to Travesco into the 50 just pull the throttle back in third and it's straight up there 48 mile an hour the indicator switch is quite high for my thumb position after riding my Honda because I've got that many switches on the Honda sometimes <laughs> everything else feels weird so here we go first second third fourth yeah national speed limit in fourth no problem at all we're in fifth sixth gear more of a cruising gear we're doing 61 drop it back to fifth suspensions on the firm side bit of breakage couple of gears drop it in oh this is fun yeah this is fun gotta be careful bit of leafage on the roads drop it over change gear yeah this is cracking doesn't get itself out of shape the suspension is really good yeah this white power stuff just take a, a right in the 30 I've got to say now I've been out what 10 minutes my fingers are on fire let's just drop it down to level shall we drop it to level 2 instead of level 4 there we are nice and quiet easy to ride slow dead easy to ride slow not much traffic about in the town just nip it up a little bit up to 30 yeah that's uh, that's smooth that is there's no temperature gauge I've not really messed with the, the switches because I'm not exactly sure what they do but I'll have a look in a minute so here we are national bang it in the corner yeah tidy here's another dustbin man they've got a a depot around here so let's just slow it down fourth gear about 40, 45, just wait till it levels out. Nobody behind me, back brake. Yes, it's okay, it's okay. It's not what I call stonking, but it's okay. The ABS kicks in, it's fine. Same again, up to 40. Nobody behind, front brake. You need to give it a full handful, all four fingers, not a problem. Round the bend. So we're going down the hill, third gear, 40 brakes. Yeah, that's not bad. The old boy breeze. It's got a single disc, don't forget, it's in a twin disc. It's not bad. But the bike don't weigh nothing. It's me that weighs it. So we're up to 60. Bit of breakage, drop it into third. Hold a nice steady line. Here we go, open it up. Oh yeah, this is great fun. One of my pals from back up Canuck Way, Baza, Baza Sullivan, he's had one of these, he bought it brand new in 2020. He took it all around Spain and Portugal and everywhere. He said he'd never, no problems at all, he's had no problems with anything. Just ride it, put petrol in and ride it. Two up some days. I'll just cut the corner slightly. There we go. Right. Up to 60, no trouble in fifth gear. This hill slightly steeper than it looks. There we go. Holding a nice line. Ooh, I like it. I do, I really do. 
just ease off slightly get into more relaxed mode approaching the island a couple of cars about brakes nothing on the right straight across one of the better indicator switches I've found on KTM's one thing that I think does let them down especially the big one the 1290 the indicator button oh it's awful awful right so third gear roll on here we come down the dual carriageway the clear third gear roll on 8,000 revs 8,000 revs ok we're hitting 70 in 5th gear 6th gear sorry we're hitting 70 we're holding 70 ok we're going downhill the buffeting's not too bad although it's quite noisy on my helmet I'm going to move over the lane there we go coming down the island throttle off 5th gear Fourth gear, no brakes yet. That slowed us down to 40. We're back in the relaxed mode, 35 into third. We ain't even touched the brakes. Not bad at all, good engine braking. So round we go, we're the point up the hill now. So we'll do the same again, third gear roll on. All clear. Third gear. Into fourth, into fifth. Okay, we're in seventy and fifth. Holding seventy. No problems at all. I'll just throttle off. So, my first impressions of the KTM 390 Adventure. What a lovely, lovely little bike. Loads of power. Easy handles. Yeah, nice. Nice, I like it. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to watch a few more, just kick on the like button. Ring the bell. Subscribe. Ask me a question. I'll do my best to answer it. Yeah, in general, if you're looking for a small bike and you're a big lad, the 390 Adventure's your bag. It is beautiful. So we're back at Damrolls. Time to wrap up. So this is the Lofty Biker. Saying, ta for now. Ta-ra. <laughs>